Good morning, folks. How are you today? Hope you're having a great day. Um, it's kind of rainy here. And um, yesterday was beautiful, so times to come, times to come. It's good stuff. So um, this past week we did an activity called Build a Bloom, and I wanted to have a video for you that went with that um, in case you were confused about Build a Bloom, how to um, make one. You had two alternatives on that day as we were studying flowers and plants this week. Your alternatives were that you could build a bloom uh, and do that activity, or you could dissect a flower, and there were some instructions for that. I'm also going to do a little flower dissection video, but I wanted to show you build a bloom. That's usually what we do in class, and um, it's kind of fun. It has a little crafty component. Not everyone's crafty, so maybe it's not for you. Um, and I like making paper flowers. I usually make some that are a different type, but um, these are pretty cool. So we have our um, supplies here and I'm just going to show you um, the basics of it. Obviously you can see my activity down here and I'm on the floor today um, crafting down here next to the outlet where my hot glue gun is so um, that's where I'm at. And you know I wanted to give you two opportunities to do a couple different activities based upon whether you had materials and supplies and were crafty or whether you just wanted to do the dissection and you could just use whatever sort of flowers were out and about. Um, there's a lot of things like daffodils around right now and um, I even saw some dandelions on a walk yesterday. So um, there's certainly flowers out there. You can get flowers from the store or um, the build a bloom activity. So Anyway, um, the, in the Build a Bloom activity, they gave you a petal template, which obviously if you don't have a printer, that would be challenging, but uh, there's nothing special about it. So any sort of paper that you have could be used to cut out some oval-shaped petals like are here. And uh, it instructs you to color them because um, petals, their function is to attract pollinators in flowers so that they'll pollinate the plant and that's why most petals that you see are colorful. So um, you could even use newspaper, you could use scrap paper, you could use anything that you had to cut out oval petals. And it wants you to cut out 12 petals um, because what you're going to do after you have colored them or um, cut them out is you're going to um, take a glue stick, other glue, whatever you have, and you're going to put a little glue in between there. The floral wire, which I sent to you or dropped off at your house, because um, that's the one thing I wasn't sure if you would have any sort of wire to make a uh, build a bloom. And if you're not doing build a bloom and you did a dissection of a flower, no worries. You don't need the, the wire for anything. But you're going to put your petals on the little piece of wire like that with some sort of glue and that way you can mold them. Um, you can flex them around and um, this one's not quite stuck yet. We want to make it stick there a little bit more when I can do that with it. So it kind of stands vertically off of the uh, wire and you know you want to kind of match the colors as if this plant were actually growing this way. Um, well, if you don't, maybe you don't you want to match the colors. That's typically how you would see a plant, but you can make anything you want. We've seen some wild flowers in the past. Creativity is certainly something that you can use in this activity. I just used some Sharpie marker to color mine, but you certainly could use anything that you had. Crayons, pen, other markers, whatever's around.
Floral wire is very flexible, so if yours got all bent, some of them to fit them in the envelopes, I had to bend them. But if yours got all bent, then you can just straighten it right back out. We use the floral wire typically for um, making like corsages and boutonnieres or other things when we're floral designing and um, using it in certain arrangements and things like that. So, all right, so I have my six petals and like I said, I've um, kind of bent mine so that they are perpendicular to the wire. And I'm gonna try to make them into a little flower bouquet here. I can absolutely change them around as I'm going, but what I wanna do is make all of the wires into one little bundle. Oh yeah, there we go. And I didn't let my glue dry at all. And honestly, I'm not sure, oh, there's one that fell off. Um, if my glue stick, it's kind of sticky. It's not as sticky as I would think it would be. But we want all these petals to line up and we want them to be the same height. Okay. And um, then the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna tape the stems together. So what we're gonna do to tape the stems together, oh boy, that petal needs a little more help, is um, any sort of tape that you have. What I have today is called wax tape. This is what we would use in class. Wax tape is actually not really super sticky when you have it typically, um, but because there's wax in it, as you heat it up with your fingers, if you hold it in between your fingers and stretch it a little, it becomes sticky. And um, we use it to wrap wires in floral designing. And this is white wax tape, but there's a green, which is much more common. And these are used quite frequently in um, floral designing when creating corsages or boutonnieres, like for a prom or a wedding. And you wrap wire with wax tape and it looks like a fake stem when you don't want a big old coarse real stem um, in a little tiny boutonniere or something like that. So we always start at the top. It's also a great bundler. And I'm gonna kind of get it around, wrap it around itself. And then I'm gonna start working my way down. Now, I know you don't have wax tape at home, unless anybody's got a parent that's a florist or is super crafty. But you could wrap your stems in masking tape. And you could wrap your stems in duct tape you could rack your your wires in uh, whatever the heck you have. Um, and you don't need to do the whole length if you don't want to. I'm showing you what it's like if you were actually gonna wrap a stem for a corsage or boutonniere. So I'm stretching that wax tape and turning, stretching, turning, stretching, turning, stretching, turning, stretching, turning. Oh gosh, I lost a pedal. Doing real good this morning, Mrs. Burnson. All the way to the bottom. And then I'm gonna pull it off. All right, listen here, you pedal. I think this is one that maybe I just didn't get enough glue on it. Once the stems are together, then you can mold those petals around, move the petals around. I lost another one. What's wrong with my glue? And I'm gonna make a cup like flower. So I'm gonna bend my petals up into like a cup shape. Listen here, petal. I 
Let's do another one. Really don't want to stick. Um, I could use tape too. Doesn't have to be any sort of like special things. Okay. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're going to add the other parts of the flower that are on here and it asked you to make a complete flower so a uh, complete flower has um, other parts and um, they've labeled it on part three on the activity it tells you which parts to be able to um, add on there. So um, you have your flower labeling diagram, but um, I've made some space in here. And like I said, I have my hot glue. Um, I'm gonna create like a little bit of a center to my flower here. And um, that center is actually gonna be like the equivalent of the ovary of the flower. So I'm gonna put some hot glue in here. And I'm gonna stick that in there. That's gonna be my ovary. And then I've found some little pieces of straws that I had at my house when I was looking for materials today. And I'm gonna put one straw there, and that's gonna be my style of the female parts of the flower. And I'm gonna add a little more hot glue. Careful if you're using something like hot glue in class, we always get a lot of, I burn myself. That happens. And you have to be patient because hot glue takes time for it to set. But I'm gonna see if I can get these little guys to stick on here. And this flower model's not perfect. You guys gotta remember that, that this is not gonna be like you know, it's designed to be crafty and have a little bit of like that it's not exact science. That we're here to learn parts, learn where the parts are, make sure we understand what a complete flower is and then go from there. All right, so I've got my ovary down there at the bottom. This right here is the style. It's the female parts of the flower. Um, the tube that brings the pollen from the male parts of the flower. And these other blue rods are going to be the filaments that help make up the male parts of the flower um, on my flower as well. Let this dry a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little glue at the top. Oop, I dribbled on my petals. A little glue at the top of each of the tubes. And my goal is that I'm gonna get one of these beads also found left over from some FFA project at the top of each one of these. Oh, the beads are a little heavy. This one's falling over. All right, so um, the red beads are on top of the filaments because they represent the anthers. And the anthers are the male parts of the flower um, that produces the pollen. And then the yellow bead that's on top of the style, that represents the stigma. And the stigma is the female part of the flower that uh, attaches and attracts the pollen and the pollen sticks there. And just to remind you, the entire female parts of the flower, the stigma, the style, and the ovary together make up uh, the pistil. 
and then the male parts of the flower, the anther and the filament make up the stamen. And when um, we remember these different things, I'll give you a little quick memory. This is Mrs. Bernson's way to remember some of these different things. Um, when we look at the uh, male parts of the flower, the stamen has the word men in it. So that's how I remember stamen. The uh, filament also has the word men in it. And so it's also a male part. And the anther, my little joke is men always have the anthers. They always have the answers to everything and they have the anthers too. So that's my funny way to remember the male parts. Female parts, the um, girls always get to carry the guns. And so that's why the girls get to be called the pistols. Um, girls might carry a pistol in their purse. So girls get the guns. And then for the stigma, uh, the stigma is sticky and it attracts pollen. Sometimes girls are sticky, they stick together, they go to bathroom in groups and uh, they're clingy sometimes to guys. So that's how I uh, teach people the sticky stigma. Uh, and then the style, girls also always have the style, right? They are stylish, they know how to dress and uh, they have some style. So that's how I remember the style. And then of course the ovary is that female part. All right, I think my parts have dried. Yeah, looks like it. So I'm gonna set that down for a minute. And the last thing that you have to do is put the sepals on. So you can see, I'm just gonna cut out some quickly here. Um, I actually forgot about that part, Mrs. Bernstein. But since my flower's kind of light colored and my stem's white, this is gonna kind of work out. Um, typically sepals are small green petals that are underneath the colorful flower petals. And the purpose of them is to protect the petals and the flower before that flower is uh, has reached maturity. And so while it's still a little bud, it um, is protected by the sepals. So after the flower has um, my glue gun's kind of breaking here. After the flower has bloomed, you don't really see the sepals anymore unless you turn it upside down or are looking underneath it. But they're there. And so glue on my little sepals here. The last part of it says that you should label the parts. Oh yeah, look at my beautiful flower there. So um, sometimes it's hard to label because of what's there. You could do a video like this and upload a video onto Google Class to show me the parts. You could actually make some little labels out of paper. You could write numbers on things and um, then do a key. Whatever works for you to label your parts. But um, here is the flower. This is Build a Bloom Project. Hope you guys enjoy it and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.